Hi guys. Today our uh, speaker is Mr. Obhishek Roy from Indian Institute of Technology, Jodhpur. Uh, he is going to speak about circuit complexity in uh, Z2 even effective field theory. And this is based on this archive paper, which he actually had written with me, along with uh, team members whose names are already written in this slide. Uh, this is the 105 number of talk in the series. And uh, yeah, like, uh, thank you, Obhishek, for mm -hmm. agreeing to give this talk for this forum. And uh, I hope we will learn. Uh, we I actually know what is the topic, but I hope we will learn something new uh, during this topic, uh, during this talk of yours. And uh, any anybody can ask question. No, nobody need to take any permission from mine. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks again, Obhishek, and yes, let's start. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity to talk. So my name is Abhishek. Uh, I recently completed my master's from IIT Jodhpur and have been working since the past six months with Sanjan, sir. And this work was done during this time. The title of my talk is Circuit Complexity in Z2 Effective Field Theory. This is based on the recent archive article that we put with Kiran from Germany, Sanjan, sir, Saurabh from Calgary, Canada, Saptarshi from IIT Kharagpur, Nilesh from Delhi Engineering College, Shomya from NIT Karnataka, Partha from Bangladesh, uh, University of Bangladesh, and Sadat currently in Iser Bharampur. I'm very privileged that I'm giving the 105th talk, like after century, <laughs> after century, the fifth next talk. So let's get started. So the overview of my talk is as follows. First, I'll give a motivation as to why we are studying quantum complexity. One plain answer. One plain answer could mathematician's answer would be like uh, oh, because it's interesting. Uh, can you pass slide, please? Yes, sir. Now you can go to the next slide. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, okay, okay. And plus, uh, the diagram from the, the diagram in which uh, I've made put it out here. So, we'll, there's a circuit and there's a field out here. So, we are taking the idea of circuit complexity from the field. And put and calculating inside the field. That's the main motive of this work. So uh, first, I'll give the motivation of to, as to why we'll study quantum complexity. Uh, and since we are physicists, we need to give a physical motivation why we are doing that. Then, since most of the people in the uh, in this uh, forum are from high energy physics, so I'll in detail explain what is quantum complexity, which is actually a main a bread and butter tool used in quantum computing. Then after having the formalism of quantum complexity needed for our case, I will go on to compute, uh, we will go on to compute the com quantum complexity in Z2 effective field theory. After that, I will disc uh, I will end with the discussion. And in D plus one dimension in ADS side in the bulk, and the boundary, there's a, uh, there's a CFT in D dimension. So there's a correspondence between them. And one of the questions, the central question is, how is the bulk related with the boundary? Question, uh, my question is, what is the difference between quantum complexity and uh, computational complexity? Uh, computational complexity, we deal with uh, like, and, uh, and, and uh, how complex the problem is, how to solve, how, uh, like uh, suppose you want to factor a uh, factor a number or uh, you want to do a problem and uh, how, what is the you know uh, complexity in solving that problem so it could be uh, there like n n p n p problem and p problem so there are two two classes of problems so in that that is uh, that's computational complexity and uh, co quantum computational complexity is like uh, to finding the gates uh, like how to actually implement uh, to that that work. so you are saying that Computational complexity is a classical one. Yeah, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah, classical, there are two types of uh, complexity. One is uh, uh, classical computational complexity in which we use gates and all which are classical, like OR gate, NOR gate, NAND gate, okay, like which we do in uh, like our computer or any semiconductor devices, which yes, uses yes. all this. Yes. Uh, 
non classical devices like trans transistor and all that to do the uh, computation but when you go to quantum case we'll use uh, okay. uh, instead of so in a way in a way my curiosity is in a way this proposal of uh, compute uh, com quantum complexity can be used to uh, design quantum computers uh, uh, the the theory uh, because uh, i'm not very sure about that because in uh, quantum computing we use qubits like the main thing is qubits but in field theory and all we are using uh, states which are like now nah, hard to compare you, know, you are right i'm saying that the basic principle yeah yeah basic principle yes we can yes so because this actually is heavily drawn like this is before in uh, high energy physics there is no like uh, work done in complexity so they draw all the idea from the uh, quantum computing and use that idea in field theory so it's actually the other way going around it could be like a later it could develop and we could you know back give uh, um, the result could even help in the development of quantum computing okay okay now you proceed okay so it uh, rio takanagi uh, uh, in the year 2006 he gave this area and entanglement uh, entropy proposal so is famous rio takanagi formula so the area inside the bulk uh, the extremal so the extremal surface inside the bulk is related to the entanglement entropy of the boundary cft so that was the first time in which uh, quantum information idea was used in like you know uh, uh, obviously others were used but like uh, this was quite a seminal work in which you know uh, entanglement entropy was uh, used for the first time in ads cft to get the one and in 2014 uh, suskin uh, found that uh, in worm wormholes that uh, some of the properties the growth of wormholes uh, could be related to quantum complexity and he and his collaborators uh, gave the uh, complexity action and complexity volume proposals so these are complexity in holographic states but the question remains what what do you mean by complexity in quantum field theory so hey here what do you mean by action and volume Mm, uh, so in the these are like uh, action uh, in the uh, gravity side uh, the action is there sir so these are like a, a, a quantity defined in the gra so gravitational side you are talking about the bulk action yeah yes sir bulk action and bulk volume and what do you mean by the volume this is a bulk volume yeah, yeah yes sir yes sir so in the yeah, yes sir. okay but okay. so now the question remains uh, what do you mean by complexity in quantum field theories so uh, around this work uh, to give the literature survey first uh, jefferson and myers gave the co concrete work in like uh, studying circuit complexity in Q uh, qft uh, alongside with sira chapman heller marico and patsawa so they defined you know uh, the idea of co complexity into quantum field theory like be before it was not there now the first time they using ideas from there they have defined similarly next work was this work was done in bosonic field theory the next work they did in fermionic field theories by khan krishna and sharma and uh, next work again was done by hackel and myers and uh, recently uh, recently they uh, they said like in a uh, complexity in quantum fields in higher dimensions have been studied in uh, by sira chapman and her collaborators and co coach so now the next pro proposal is that in ads cft you know, what happens is the conformal field theory is strongly coupled so this uh, all these states are weakly coupled uh, sorry not first first are first three first one two three are no couple uh, free free fields and in weakly interacting field uh, bhattacharya and sina and shekhar have this work, done this work in which they have considered phi four theory and uh, this relation to renormalizable group so now our question was like if we include higher order terms in the weakly interacting qft how does how to one goes about computing the circuit complexity so by this motivation uh, uh, we started this project so first i'll explain you what uh, what do you mean by circuit complexity so give you a uh, crash course uh, th th this is a circuit okay this is a circuit this is a circuit this is a, how we uh, write circuits the aim is to go from to do co, do to do information processing using this gates now as uh, sanjeev sir pointed out before it could be classical gates or quantum gates so but in our case will be uh, 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 <clears throat> will be con concerned with quantum gates so in the quantum gates could be 
as example as an X, X gate, Hadamard gate, and C node gate. So there are many other gates uh, which can be used to play around with qubits and uh, do information processing tasks with qubits. So, but these are with uh, discrete degrees of freedom. But when we go to like um, uh, quantum field hey, theory hey, and all, can you please tell that what is the uh, purpose of these individual gates? What they do? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so suppose uh, I'll I'll take an example of uh, this. Uh, X gate. So suppose uh, the, uh, I start with a qubit which is alpha zero plus beta one. Suppose this is in uh, electron or any qubit which has you know a probability of uh, a probability amplitude of, of alpha in being in zero and a probability amplitude of beta being in one. So now if you uh, and this is X gate is designed in laboratory or this could be just sigma X measurement of this one. So what happens is if you put psi inside this, what, what it does it, it uh, so the matrix representation of this is uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. So what it does is it changes the amplitude of the other. The beta gets swapped to this one and alpha gets swapped to this one. And similarly, in this uh, Hadamard gate, uh, which is uh, which uh, zero uh, zero is supposed in, in, input is coming, then it processes it and it makes it to this uh, superposition of zero and one. And in uh, Avishay, gate, yeah. So this X gate is sort of uh, like analogous to not gate. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not gate, yeah, not. So they, it's, it's also called uh, classical, yeah, to the not gate. And uh, C not get what happens is this. This is interesting. There is a uh, one is a target. Okay, in C not is there is a there are the two ways of getting inside this C C not. Uh, so what happens is uh, in C not suppose yeah uh, if the target state if it's one then the target state is flipped. Suppose there is zero and suppose there is one going inside. Suppose it is one. Okay, so it flips this one. So it becomes one. So, but if there is just zero going inside, uh, it won't do anything. So zero will remain zero. So that is the work of C naught. So as you can see there, uh, the degrees of freedom is uh, just like uh, the Hilbert space is discrete. The Hilbert space is discrete, but our aim is to go to quantum field theory. In quantum field theory, as you know, there are infinite degrees of freedom. So how do we define gates in those cases? So we can define these gates, okay? So we'll do in, in this case, what we will do is to, uh, We'll work with the question of preparation of states, preparation of preparation of states. So there could be a general size state. Now, in this general size state, what in general size state, it could be a Gaussian, it could be this or it could be that. It is not just a qubit. So in this, how can we uh, do the information processing work? On one gate is to add a face. So we could add a face, an operator edge, which we define as this. We just add a face to this one. So there are two, there are two, two are two, two particles, and the total function is x1 psi of x1 x2. So if you apply h, it gives a phase change. So j1 is suppose this one. J1 is um, this one. So if you just uh, apply this, this will shift the uh, position of x by epsilon x naught. So you uh, suppose x is the particle, this uh, wave function. When you apply, suppose, J1, so it will become, suppose, it's initially at uh, 0. Now it will go to, sorry, it's initially at x1. Now it will go to x1 plus epsilon x0. x0 is a constant, so it will be shifted by an amount of this one. So that work can be done by this gate, J1 gate. The other gate could be P. Similarly, the same could be done for the momentum. K1 gate. And the interesting one is the entangling gate. The ent entangling gate is the interesting one. So what, where, what we do is uh, Q1 and Q2 are defined as follows. There, this is the Q1, Q2. So what it does is, it does is that when you apply to this, the position, this becomes mixed. Uh, like the position, they, it comes out here, so it becomes entangled. So this becomes entangled and the degree of entanglement is given by this epsilon factor. So more the value of epsilon, the more it will be entangled. And similar other, other gate could be a scaling gate in which you know the X has been scaled. So these are the maybe physical, uh, this could be the gates which we can consider in uh, field theories in where uh, there are continuous degrees of freedom. Now the question is, what is circuit complexity? Now this, we, do, we want to do the task at hand to go from 
psi initial psi reference to psi target as efficient as possible. So we, you know, as efficient as fast as possible. So we remove all the redundant gates. So which uh, gates which are not actually adding to anything, we remove that. So in the process of that, when we minimize it, when we minimize it, minimize it, then when we minimize it, then we say uh, we say that the circuit, uh, the then the number of gates in that circuit will give the uh, the circuit complexity. So that would be like the, how complex it would be to go from different state to the target state. So um, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. And the unitary, the unitary uh, will take it from uh, psi R to psi T. So the unitary gates can be uh, decomposed into elementary gates. All these elementary gates, uh, G1, G2, G3, the previous gates which we had defined, and the number of times that gate has been applied. So in the top is the number of the times the gate has been applied, and G1, G2 are the gates. So, but uh, we put there a tolerance factor that suppose it does not reach, okay, uh, because they are, they are uh, continuous states. Suppose it does not reach, reach, reach the target state. So by an epsilon amount also, if it reaches, so up to that we'll consider that uh, to the tolerance. So the psi target and psi reference well, is an is in about a tolerance of epsilon. So to get mathematically rigorous. Circuit complexity would be the summation of all the gates given that this gates and the unitary has been minimized to the epsilon. So a diagram, uh, diagrammatically, you can see, of oh, course, before that, just I'll explain. Suppose there, uh, the, the, there's a qubit of qubit, then we have two cross two matrix, right? Two cross two matrix. Now, when we multiply all of them, okay, so all of them is this will be also a two cross, this will be also a two cross, two cross. So what we're doing is a two cross, two cross matrix, two cross, two cross matrix. So that this would be an SU, SU2, right? SU2, SU2. Now we are trying to do something is like, we want to go from this initial state to the final state, uh, to the final state such that this is minimized. So this in the, now it, in the space of, SU2 manifold uh, in the speech of this. I have a doubt that yes, instead sir. of calling to be this to be a just unitary group, why you are calling SU2? Uh, be, uh, be, because uh, the, uh, we need the determinant to be one. So that constraint, uh, because uh, unitarity, unitarity has the determinant one condition. So with that condition, the uh, GL oh. becomes. No, no, that I can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, yeah, see yes. that why this is important here. Oh, uh, this I'm important to uh, make you sure that uh, what we end up is like there is we are trying to minimize geodesics in this uh, Nelson's problem in which the this the whole minimizing the gate is turned to the problem of finding geodesic in SU2N space. So that I was more trying to motivate. Okay. Okay, like it, if it's two cross two for uh, uh, just two one qubit, then if you Two, three, four qubits, then it'll be four, four, four cross four. Then it will be, if there are three qubits, then it'll be six cross six. Then, uh, sorry, eight cross eight, and so on. So when you have uh, n number of qubits, then the task of finding the circuit, uh, minimum circuit, will be turned to a finding the geodesic in this uh, two, SU2N manifold, the shortest path to, to reach that. Uh, any question? Just one question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the in the previous slide you showed some gates. Uh, are are these the only type of gates possible? Like translation, entangling, entangling gates, scaling gates. So far, in the literature, the only... I found this, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Like, but so far in the literature, I found this, this many. We have we have found this many gates only. Mm, but yeah, we could uh, uh, prepare more uh, more general gates from this. But I think these are the more fundamental gates. So if there are other gates also, we can use these two gates. Okay, combination of two gates, two two of these gates to get that uh, other gate. Like suppose there if there is. So these are I think the fundamental gates. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we could investigate. You know what could be other gates possible. Okay, can, now. can can anybody do any kind of rotation uh, with this kind of gates? Because here I can see that scaling gate, entangling gate, 
translational gait, all these are there. Uh, is it possible to do some kind of rotation with the uh, gait operation? Uh, I, I have not checked, but we, we could actually uh, check. Why I'm asking, because in general, conformal field theory, if you mm -hmm. look at the conformal algebra, then mm -hmm. you see that apart from the low range operations, there, are, mm -hmm. there is a scaling operation and another one is a special conformal transformation. I don't know you have checked or not, but the special conformal transformation is basically the, like, uh, some, re some, uh, some repetition of rotation, translation or something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think that uh, that can also be done. And my mm -hmm. point is, this yeah. can also be done because you have told that there is a uh, inner connection with conformal field theory as well. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, since in this conformal algebra, the rotation group also there. So I hope the rotation operation can also be done. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Maybe you can say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can investigate, you know, uh, later after this, after this talk, we can, you know, work, work it out. That okay. would be a good uh, good to see, you know, what are other more general gates possible. Okay. Mm, yes. So now this unitary, okay, has, uh, is written in this form. So let me just explain. Uh, OI represents gates, okay? OI represents gates. And why I will represent which and what time or what param at what parameter it's on or off. So we can think of all the gates. Uh, suppose they are all these gates. Suppose uh, they have. This, suppose they are just uh, four gates. So O one one. O two. To one and O two. Suppose these are the gates possible. When to act and which to act will be de uh, will be decided by the function of y i. So these are this will be there. As we go along from 0 to S1, so there will be all these gates acting acting uh, around. This will be decided by this yi factor. So it could be like uh, that time it would uh, make it on or off. So that is how we go, we will try to you know uh, implement this. And also this is, this is a part order is, is that uh, the first gates, we are starting that first gates will be applied first and the later gates will be applied later. So from that, so why I so why I could be counting of gates, you know, because it it owns and off the gates and how many times it does, so we can get an idea of that why I will give give the number of gates. Number can, of, can you speak a little bit loud? Oh, sorry, number of gates. So why I would give the number of gates? No, no I'm saying that speak a little bit loud. Uh, now, am I audible? Hello. You are audible, but your voice is a little bit low. Can you? Okay, I'll, I'll try to speak uh, as loud as possible. Uh, now, now is it okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll, I'll continue. So this would be the number of gates uh, y i would give. So that would be the aim, you know. So if you want to calculate complexity, we need to find this y i, okay, and that will give the you know number of gates. So if you integrate it along the path, so they'll get the uh, the measure of complexity. So for before that, so we need to put define a metric uh, and a distance functional. So the, we do that using this. So the, 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 the similar to that of, of that Lagrangian, you know, in which there's phi and phi dot. So similar in that, uh, there's a functional f which depends on u and u dot. So the properties of u of f could be, you know, continuity, positivity, uh, and positive homogeneity and triangle inequality. So the normal. So if it uh, agrees all of this, then it's called a Finsler manifold. So that's a mathematics term. So and that. And after all that, when we get the yi, if you want to find the complexity, then you just sum all of them and integrate throughout the path. So when you do this, you get a measure of complexity. So that's the whole, whole aim to get the complexity. So just, I'll give you an algorithm, okay? Just general algorithm, how to do it. Uh, so first now that, and using this algorithm will apply to our case. So the first thing which we need to do is have an Hamiltonian of our theory. So obviously we need to have an Hamiltonian of a theory. Second, we need to specify which is the reference state and target state. After that, we determine the uh, reference and target state. We need to determine what are our gates, what are our gates which will take us from the reference to the target state. 
then third uh, will so and then we need to parameterize you because you will be the one taking uh, from the initial to the final state so we need to parameterize you and uh, this I'll, I'll i'll get to the maths of this in the detail of the maths of this in the next slides so and later then we'll do this maths i'll explain this in the later slide like slide, uh, each line by line uh, it will come and then after that after finding yis after finding yis then we can uh, integrate and get, get the complexity measure. Okay, let's start with our Hamiltonian. So for our Hamiltonian, for our effective field, uh, effective field theory, effective field theory is this. So the, this is the free scalar part, free, free scalar part with a mass M and here are the couplings. Phi, Achha, can, phi. Can, you, can you go back to the um, the step followed to perform this computation. Oh, go to go to the slide which has done this computation. Uh, previous slide. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. The previous one. Yes. Uh, this one. Uh, Why these generators are important here? Uh, uh, so we will we'll, uh, generate. So the to represent the uh, so the gates have to be represented in the matrix form. So uh, given a matrix representation, so we need to uh, after having the matrix representation, we need to write them explicit in the basis. So we like, like expand them in the basis. So that is why we uh, and then we we'll use the generators to generate the you know the path followed in the uh, uh, the manifold. That is why we need uh, generators. Okay, but these generators are generated from the some infinitesimal transformation? Uh, uh, it, it, yeah, we could do, we could do that. Uh, but since uh, we later on, it turns out that uh, the, ma uh, the matrix which we get is discrete. There'll be oh, like- okay. uh, I'm, My point is in Lie algebra, once yeah, yeah, we calculate I, I know. the generators, we calculate from the infinitesimal transformation. Mm. Okay. Now, is this a finite uh, transformation generator or infinite? Finite transformation? In our case, it's a finite transform generators. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, like, uh, if we if I go to the previous the slide, uh, if you go to this, you know, if you go to the generator, like this could be thought of as generators, you know, H, J, K, A, Q, A, B, S, your continuous generators mm -hmm. could be thought of that. Uh, but uh, uh, in our case, it, will, it turned out that uh, it's dis discrete. So we have to just work with discrete uh, generators. Okay. So this is and the Hamilton. Here, here why uh, in the previous slide, it seems to me that you are actually calculating some geodesic distance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where yeah, I'll go to the where this geodesic is defined, are you actually trying to map this problem with a curvilinear manifold? Yeah, yeah the, the, Finsler, the Finsler manifold, which I talked about, in that we are trying to find the geodesic in that manifold. Achha. So here you are talking about like some kind of point particle is moving from one point to another point in this curvilinear manifold, uh, having GIJ metric how that is uh, going from one point to another point how like what is the distance between one point to another point is it, yeah, yes, uh, not so only the distance the optimal distance yeah, yeah, yes sir you are trying distance. to find out that yeah, yeah, yes sir okay so our hamiltonian is uh, uh, so the couplings are 5 4 5 6 and 5 8 respectively and are coupled to the P scalar field theory by lambda four, lambda six, lambda eight. Now the coupling constants are small. Now small compared to what? So in our the in our theory, there's uh, m parameters. So lambdas should have should be taken to be smaller than m. So that that is how we define our Hamiltonian. Now to uh, get to the problem, first we'll do a UV regulator by putting this uh, uh, theory into a square lattice, a lattice specifically a square by discretizing. So we do the process so of discretizing. From a uh, continuous field theory, you right now going to lattice field theory. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. So from uh, so this is basically uh, you are actually trying to regularize the theory 
with having equidistant spacing of lattice. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So this is basically the discrete representation of your theorem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in this lattice, one thing is important once you talk about the lattice. So lattice have their own symmetries. Okay. Mm -hmm. All these symmetries are preserved here. Because lattice has to have some kind of yeah, yes, sir. We will uh, yeah, yeah. the translation the, yeah. yeah the trans the translation translation symmetry uh, will uh, later be explicitly using the translator translation symmetry while we going to the Fourier space and that that is how we you know uh, be able to compute the complexity later. So yeah, we'll be exploiting this symmetry. And you have taken the lattice spacing between all the lattices are same. Yeah, 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 yes, sir. So and the, small the, or large. Yeah. Yes, sir. The, the lattices are spaced at a large distance or small distance? This is a small distance. Uh, yeah, yeah. So UV is a re regular uh, UV cutoff, so it could be small or large. So that would depend. So del uh, since delta is. Um, okay, we'll address that later. But we'll address that later. So be, uh, because we need to compare with the other constants of the theory and, you know. Keep delta. What does n vector corresponds to? Uh, the uh, lattice points. So here the location of uh, location of lattice is given by the n vector. <coughs> okay. And the uh, xi vector is given by the uh, other unit corresponding unit vectors. Okay. And uh, now what we do is uh, we uh, re redress this theory. So. We re uh, parameter, not parameter, we'll uh, <clears throat> re, uh, uh, dimensionally scale this such that it represents a coupled harmonic oscillator. So, since we have done this as m, omega, and sigma, we have actually intentionally done it so that this rep resembles a coupled harmonic oscillator. So, when we do this uh, dimension scaling, we get this. So, in this case, omega is the frequency which is uh, related to the uh, m uh, mass of the theory. And the lattice, lattice spacing uh, is uh, the mass of this uh, oscillator, oscillator. And the intercoupling uh, between the coupled harmonic oscillators is given by uh, this capital sigma, which is one by delta. So one can see that if delta increases, the inter mass coupling uh, increases. Uh, and uh, sorry, if you uh, if delta dec uh, decreases, then the inter mass coupling increases. So there's a inter the interaction between them increases. So also, if the mass the mass of this couple of oscillators, uh, if it decreases the the delta, so the hence the mass will also increase. So as you can see, this is uh, a couple and couple and couple harmonic oscillators. So the the summation is going for n. So first we will work with a simple case so, of two harmonic. So in terms of couplings, mm, yes, sir. we're doing a weakly coupled theory or strongly coupled theory. Uh, because since uh, yeah yeah th this is like on a weekly uh, uh, weekly couple regimes uh, like uh, not not uh, strongly okay. because uh, yeah, yeah. and what is the perturbation parameters so uh, this uh, uh, is uh, kind of perturbation so yeah, yes, the perturbation parameters and so per perturbation parameters are lambda four lambda six and lambda eight okay. And so I, I just in the next slide, I'll just explain it much more uh, clearly. So first, let's take a case of uh, two oscillator case. Okay. So now the summation is summation is going from uh, uh, one to two. Now there are uh, two oscillators. Now this is how what it looks like. So then we what we go is go to the diagonal basis. So we rotate the basis, and now this takes this form. In this form, you can see uh, the the terms. This one become uncoupled harmonic oscillators. So in the diagonal basis, this term in the blue region is an uncoupled region. And the green region can be treated as a perturbation to this uncoupled harmonic oscillator. Now in this, uh, now what, now we need to find the ground state of this wave function. So what we do is we take the ground state of that unperturbed, unperturbed. So this is the, for uh, not a ground state for, um, Oh, excited state. I need to clarify. I need to understand once again. So here I can see that uh, because of having this omega term, it is coupled. Okay. Yes, yes. Sir. Now you are doing some kind of field redefinition or some kind of normal mode or something like that. 
and once you do that in a coordinate some kind of coordinate transformation yes, a coordinate trans yes, like okay, once, once you do that you can actually restate uh, uh, re-express the hamiltonian in a form such that one can see that this coupled contribution will vanish in the new uh, coordinates yes sir yes sir but what what uh, the thing is i can see that all the coupled contribution is run right now goes to the perturbative contribution yes sir yes sir now they they, have, they all initially, have been initially it was not yes sir okay but is it possible to deal with that it is not complicated yeah but it is complicated yeah, but that is the, the the challenge of the problem to like you know how to get the how to treat this as perturbations and since lambda 4 lambda 6 and lambda 8 are small so we can treat them in a perturb I mean, like we'll take the values of lambda 4 lambda 6 and lambda 8 such that they obey the perturbative you know expansion okay okay so so what we do is we focus on the ground state. We take zero zero, uh, which is an unentangled state. Okay, unentangled state. The non uh, non perturb part is an unentangled state. But and so so this is the wave function of the ground state oscillators. Now to this we'll to this we'll add perturbation. So we'll use our very old good friend uh, perturbation theory, which we use almost everywhere. The time independent perturbation. Theory. Yes, the time independent perturbation theory. Uh, this is the this is the on perturb wave function, and this is the uh, perturbation. This is the this is the perturbation to this. This is the perturbation to this. Now we use our formula of uh, perturbation theory, but now they are instead of two states, now they are two oscillators. So we'll uh, modify the perturbation theory with uh, this. Instead, previously they were just one uh, quantum number. Now they are two quantum numbers, and using this, uh, we get the first perturbation fu function corresponding to lambda four. This for lambda six, and this for lambda eight. Now what we do is that uh, we take a simple trick. Okay, since uh, lambda four, lambda six, and lambda eight are small. What we do is uh, we use this uh, uh, exponential now of x equals to one plus x. So we'll use this. We'll use this and uh, express this in terms of an exponential. So we take this uh, now. This is the full perturbed wave function. Now we express this in terms of an exponential. And uh, the value of alpha zero is here, and there are other terms which I have not written, which can be referred. Uh, it's quite huge. Uh, so this is the reference state. Uh, sorry, target state of our theory. So target. This is what we want to reach. So we want to see the complexity of this state. How to reach this state? Soon, I'll next in the next slide. I'll just define the reference state. Well, first of all, your motivation is to construct the target state. Yeah, yes, sir. Time. And now, once you construct the target state, you can calculate the complexity. That is not mm -hmm. task to do, but yeah, that the main motivation first to construct the target state. So, like, in, any question on the on how this was? At constructed? this point, if there is any question by anybody, please ask immediately. Nilesh. So, like, I have a question. Like, uh, like. Is this the like uh, more most general like uh, state which we can like consider or? Uh, like uh, no, the most general state in the next slide I will define the most general state. So this is like the I, I I have a one doubt that I have already pointed before also that uh, it's okay that you have started with a Gaussian state. Okay, mm -hmm. your initial state was a Gaussian state, isn't it? Yes, sir. This is not a Gaussian. This is a nearly Gaussian. No, no, this is not. I'm mean, talking about the unperturbed state. Yes, sir. So, is it possible to start with the non Gaussian state? Yeah. Start with the non Gaussian state. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that, uh, yeah. We, uh, that has not been done in the literature. Like, uh, we, we checked out for non Gaussian states, complexity has not been calculated. So, like in the. Yes, because the here you do what you did. 
you have rotated the coordinate system and you started with something now my point is if you don't rotate the coordinate system mm. if you just calculate with your previous hamiltonian mm. Mm, yes sir. that's a great question sir there let, you don't need to rotate but you can start with something non gaussian now my point is with that non gaussian state if you construct a target state that thing and this target state may, may not be same because mm -hmm. both of them are written in different mm -hmm. different coordinates but my point is both of them will give the same complexity or not mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that I, 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 we need to check so that one. Did you get my point, all of you? Yes, sir. 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 Constructed the targets. That is okay. Now my point is, if we don't do that, if we start with the previous Hamiltonian, if you don't rotate the coordinate system, then it is a couple, and this is obviously uh, it is not the product of two wave functions of the harmonic oscillator at the ground state. Okay, then I expect it would be some kind of non-Gaussian state. Okay, then if you start with that, then if you construct the target state out of that it may not be same but the complexity calculated from that prescription and this prescription both of them are same or not that's my question hmm. but the question is like my, my my point is it has to be same because things are not basis dependent yeah 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 so the question is okay okay so like explicitly prove it that if complexity is basis dependent or not yes yeah okay, okay. that's the yeah, that, 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 that we need to check out Okay. I think in the literature, no one has commented on that. On, on that. No, no, no one commented. That's why I'm asking. Mm -hmm. this yes. Okay. Sorry, I went too fast. Hey, why you are jumping from here and there? Sorry, sorry, sorry. By mistake, by it, it was a glitch. Uh, okay, now uh, just before this part. Now this okay. Now let's write the uh, basis out here. Okay, we write the basis. All the basis they are like uh, x zero, x one, and all them, and write uh, other write in the column also the basis. And now construct the a matrix. A matrix such that this exponential inside can be written as exponential of v a transpose a b v b. So that is the meaning. Now, what we do is go, go is that we take this and we write it in this form to get the E matrix. That has been done in the next slide. So this is uh, to get that thing, this A thing out here, inside the matrix, inside the exponential part. So this comes to be a 14 cross 14 matrix. So this is your S0 and your S S1. So here all the all the bases are x0, x1, x0, x1. So all the bases, if you combine, you get this 14 cross 14 matrix. So now when we multiply back this V transpose A V, if we do, we get back the inside the exponential thing, the exponential part, inside the exponential part. So that is what we, we have done here. And now our aim is in this matrix space, like in this space. Now we start from S0, which is a reference state, okay? Which is the most general state of okay. it. So all the possible combinations we take from here. And we start with S0 and we want to go to S1. So now in this slide, uh, this, this is what we want. And now we define our matrix generators. So they are 14 cross four, the the A is 14 cross 14. So similarly, now the generators are defined as this M1, M2, M3, such that in each of the IJ columns, suppose M1 will have one in the first, term, M2 will have uh, one in the second, this second part, M3 will have it on the third part, M4 and, and all that, such that trace of MI, MJ transpose is delta IJ. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll 
show you a bit later why uh, this uh, why why this is important to take this one because it will be simplified to get yi we we'll we'll can simplify to get yi now in this matrix space it can be shown that as the final one is us1 as0 us1 transpose so now what we need to do is using this we need to parameterize u so we do the parameterization parameterization of unitary so we had uh, u a u t equals to a so that that is what we need to do now we need to parameterize this unitary so your unitary uh, is considered in a block diagonal form because the form of a is also in a block diagonal form uh, so, abhishek hello yes oh uh, so the this left hand side a is actually for s is equal to 1 right Okay, yeah, yeah. this is s equals to one, and this is s equals to zero. Okay. S equals to. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, thank you so much. So this you want you to unitary matrix that you have constructed. It's a finite dimensional, but if you yes. uh, in general for effective field theory, it is an infinity cross infinity. Uh, actually, we would try find the complexity of the ground state of the effective field theory. No, no, the no, 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 no. Effective field theory, you have truncated up to phi eight. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes. Sir. And, yes, sir. If you can consider talking, all of them, yes, the all time, suppose. Yes, sir. It, this unitary is basically infinite dimensional matrix. Mm. Pretty mm. infinite number of elements. Mm -hmm. Now my point is here. In this construction of u1, u2, u3, u4, is there is any similarity in the blocks? Yes, sir. all of them. Uh, uh, yes, in the next slide, I'll show the similarity. So, but one similarity is that uh, all can be done in block diagonal form. Like it can be done in block diagonal form. But, and the thing is, it's been in for odd cases. Sorry, even we are working with even operators like phi, uh, phi four, phi six, phi eight. In this case. It can be written uh, in block diagonal form uh, without uh, using nice basis, as you know. But if we, we did also try for odd cases, in that case it was very it was uh, not not possible, you know, for all cases to write the, the, that in a block diagonal form. Yeah, but uh, odd cases it may have the uh, other terms in the zero will be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off diagonal form. There. Yeah. Now my point is, you can do kind of some kind of similarity transformation. Uh, if you have, if you do the similarity transformation, then you can actually rotate it again and the yeah, organize yeah, yeah. the matrix in a way that it is a block diagonal. Yes, yeah, so we we did also think about yeah we did think about that uh, part, but the problem was actually the basis were coming up to be x three to the power two x half. So these were the basis that were coming. So we were not uh, like. Uh, quite confused. Well, I can understand. I'm, I'm not talking about the complicacy of the situation. I'm saying mm -hmm. that if you have the cross components that can be expressed in terms of the block diagonal form using similarity mm -hmm. transformation. Yeah, 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 yes, sir, sure, sir. Okay. But that, that part we like we have we have have not in investigated further. Yeah. For odd cases. Okay. So as uh, so. This y1, y2, y3, and y4. So all has been written in a block diagonal form. What is this about this 14 number? From where uh, this 14 number is coming? So because this is uh, 2 cross 2, this is 3 cross 3, and this is 4 cross 4, 5 cross 5. Now this is. 5 cross 5, this is 4 cross 4, this is 3 cross 3, and this is 2 cross 2. So this is an entire... Oh, yeah. So you have to add. Three. Yes, sir. 5, this 4, is 3, 2, all this. So this is an entire, actually, as you can see, the uh, complexity of this problem is also complex. So... And again, I have to say that for phi 8 theory, this is 14 cross 4. Yes, sir. Uh, Abhishek, so if we see that there's some sort of pattern like first is two cross two, then one cross one, then again two cross two block, then again one cross one, then again yeah, two yeah, cross yeah. two. So if we go further, like five ten and five twelve, yeah, maybe yeah, they, yeah. Then... the plan was yeah, the plan was initially to go to as much as possible. The, mm -hmm. the problem 
problem was, you know, for, uh, get, the wave functions were getting very huge. So this, all this alpha mm. coefficient and beta coefficient were actually taking one, two pages long, okay. So mm. that was like uh, not feasible to, you know, or like, so since we're getting the same pattern, so we just... Uh, so like we can, like, yeah, yeah, like that pattern will go on. Like, yeah. the, the pattern will go on. Mm -hmm. So you can't crank it in here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Another point is uh, this is only valid for two two oscillators. Like for n oscillators, this gets more complicated. Yes. Yes. When in the any when I'll go in the n oscillator, let, let's let's discuss this there. Okay, you proceed. Okay, now you can. Uh, so now we parameterize this using the uh, ADS parameterization. So it means like uh, since the, we initially started with like the idea of complexity from holography. So like uh, trying to connect that, like we use uh, this ADS three parameterization. Also, this ADS three parameterization. Why this is important? Why this parameterization is important? Because still One now you are talking, there is no, nowhere is ADS. Now, why mm -hmm. suddenly you are jumping on ADS? Uh, because like when we use this parameterization, the DS element, you know, uh, uh, can be written in a compact form. I didn't understand your point. Like uh, later, uh, using this parameterization, we'll try to find the uh, length element in the manifold. Now, if you use this parameterization as shown in uh, 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 in Rob Meyer's paper, it can be uh, uh, the DS element can be written in a compact uh, compact way. Why this writing in a compact way is important? Uh, because then we need to uh, get the complexity functional. So you add all of them and to get the complexity. And if you don't write in a compact way, can't you able to calculate? Uh, yes, we, uh, we can. We can. Yeah, we can use uh, like. Uh, any parameterization we can use, but uh, yeah, we, we are working with the ADS parameterization. I need a stronger motivation of this. Anybody, Partho, Nilesh, Shomo, can anybody, can anybody tell me that what is the main motivation to connect with ADS3? So I think like uh, with this, we can uh, compute the geodesic, like we can construct the manifold and then find this metric element. Otherwise you can't do that. I, it it uh, is a parameterization, means you have chosen that. Are you talking Yeah, like we could parameterize in other way also, but like- Yes, but easy. why, that's my point. Why you have chosen ADS? What is the main point? That's why you have chosen particular ADS. There is something which you guys are missing. Oh, okay, sir. We'll, uh, we'll uh, think uh, think about this. And I need to understand this thing. Mm. Okay, and I need the answer from all of you. Yeah, sure, sir. Okay. Can I proceed to forward? Yeah. Okay. Now we need to calculate from this uh, u the line element. So what we do is uh, we take the derivative with respect to x. So the y uh, mi comes out. Now, since uh, then we'll multiply MIT transpose, MIT transpose on the both sides and take the trace. When we take the trace, we can easily, since we have chosen the M to be such that uh, the trace MI, MJ is one. So this part becomes free. Now we take the differential of this, differential of this. Taking the differential, we can get the line element. So this is the uh, general, the expression for the line element. Now we have already parameterized you, and uh, we have also AIJ which is uh, all plus plus plus. So with that, we get our line element. So this is our line element in this uh, space. Now, giving the boundary condition. Just, just, just wait. I want to see the line element again. Okay. So now again, using the boundary conditions and 
the parameterizations, we can uh, find the complexity function, which we have done. Uh, like, what is the boundary condition? Like uh, AS has to be this one target state. AS equals to zero has to be target state. And AS uh, equals to one should be the, uh, uh, sorry, AS zero equals should be the reference state. AS one equals to be the target state. So when, when you put that, it will put conditions to the uh, parameters, uh, tau, rho, theta, and y. So using that again, yeah. and simplifying, we can uh, get the du. And in the simplification, we use uh, 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 killing vectors to simplify using the exploiting the symmetry, we can uh, write, write the du. Okay. Okay, now we, are, we need to go, that was for two oscillators. Now we need to go for n oscillators. So what we go for going into n oscillators, what we, what we do is we go into the Fourier space. So why we go to the Fourier space, what happens is like, this is our Hamiltonian. We do our Fourier transform. This, we do our Fourier transform. And after doing our Fourier, uh, Fourier transform, this part, uh, this part becomes this one. It becomes this part. And this can be written as, again, this one. So now in the Fourier space, this is a uh, harmonic oscillators. So the coupling has gone been gone away. So o omega bar has this couple coupling and uh, omega. And now we can use in this Fourier space the solution of a wave function. Now in this part again, uh, this 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 will be treated as perturbations to this uh, uh, to this harmonic oscillator. So these are n, n harmonic oscillators in this case. So now the the main the point is how to do the Fourier transform in five four five six and five eight. So, so like we had five four five four. Now there are four four summations four summations. Now these four summations can be reduced to three summations using these two conditions. One, we are using this one, the, the previous one, which we said that translation symmetry and this, uh, the general, uh, this, the direct, the, the delta, delta, this uh, mathematical identity, and we can simplify the summations to three. Now these summations repeat. Uh, after every mod n, so that we can actually write it down. Now there are four terms out here. There are six terms. There are seven terms. Now this uh, Hamiltonian will act as perturbation. Now using this, we need to find the wave function in the Fourier space. So the wave function in the Fourier space would be this part comes from the harmonic oscillator the, in the Fourier space. And this part comes from the perturbation. Again, the same one which we had in the previous, uh, the same trick which we used, but now the psi four is are huge. So, so we need some, uh, take into all possible combinations. So psi four will be this. Psi six will be this, uh, where there are six, where we have calculated in the paper, C, C1, C2, C3, all of them. So I've just listed C1 and C2, they are, uh, 11 of them, and since there are uh, some of them are as big as this page, you know, I've restricted writing all of them. We can check the paper if you want to um, uh, see them. And similarly for the psi 8. So psi 8 has 22 terms. So these are the uh, wave functions. Now we need to calculate the complexity in this one. So again, the same thing we need to, to put our target state and reference state. So again, the, uh, this is again inside the exponential. Both of them are, are inside the exponential this, this time also that as the previous one. And uh, now we, have, we know uh, uh, the, the wave function psi 4, psi 6, and psi 8. Now using that, we'll con uh, construct this A matrix. Uh, a S0, A, a and A S1. Now, in this case, well, what we uh, observed and uh, uh, pre previous authors also observed that uh, this uh, A can be broken down into ambiguous and unambiguous part. Now, the ambiguous part is that uh, uh, which has, you know, 
x0 terms, x0 square, and all these bases, they, they form the uh, unambiguous part. So no matter how much you, you know, choose the bases here and there, this part is sure to be, to get the, the values of this will be same. But in the ambiguous part, like other bases, like uh, the, this types of bases, which are there, those bases, we cannot, you know, uh, concretely uh, give the uh, matrix element to this one. So that uh, part we call this as uh, unambiguous. So we, which is not like sure about, but we are very sure about uh, the unambiguous part. So now we define the as uh, as zero, and then we also define the as equals to one. Now uh, that point is to go again from here to here. So now the complexity can be split down into the two blocks. One is coming from an uh, uh, ambiguous part and one is coming from the unambiguous part. So we'll use this uh, result uh, that if uh, the bases have been simultaneous, uh, the, if the matrices have been simultaneously diagonalized, diagonalized, then the complexity will be the ratio of the eigenvalues. So the ratio of the eigenvalues. So now using this, we can find the complexity. So now the task is to find the eigenvalues of this big, and n cross n matrix. So we split the split the eigenvalues into two parts. Since uh, the eigenvalues, if you take n or n n to be even and or n to be odd, the eigenvalues have different patterns. So we have split them into even and odd cases. So this comes from the phi four, this comes from the phi six, and this comes from the phi eight. Phi eight. So now this is our uh, good old ha our Hamiltonian. So now we, uh, so that the theory is uh, scales uh, uniformly. Uh, all, all, the, all the coefficients have been scaled using this. And uh, we have taken the values of lambda. Uh, oh, and I would mention the point that uh, there are no, we uh, did not find any analytical expression for phi, uh, eigenvalues coming from phi six and phi eight. But uh, previous authors have found uh, uh, they, they actually, uh, there exist uh, a pattern, uh, uh, an analytical pattern for uh, eigenvalues for phi four uh, part. So the uh, perturbation from the phi four part. So now we turn to our old good, good old friend, the Mathematica to help us like uh, in this N cross N matrix, how to find the eigenvalues. So this is up to, this part we have as much as done everything analytically. So now in the next proceeding parts, we do it numerically because we do not find any uh, uh, analytical expression from the perturbation from uh, phi six and phi eight part. So, and also the values of uh, lambda four, lambda six and lambda eight have been taken uh, to hold the perturbative uh, expansion series. So we have taken uh, this values and we've, uh, so the, even uh, Mathematica, she was taking a lot of time to uh, calculate. Uh, so we turned to our friend uh, Sadat, uh, so his, his laptop helped us. So, so the computation was like uh, taking one, two days, uh, but in his laptop, at least we were able to do the, that in a day. So the, this, this is the, our, our results, what we found. So when we add into the first, let me explain uh, for the first graph. Okay, first, let me explain the blue dots out here, the blue dots, represents complexity from free field theory. Complexity from free field theory. And when we add five four interaction, five four interaction, this, the yellow and red dot uh, gives the, uh, <clears throat> gives the correction to the complexity. And also we see that odd and even cases have different patterns. So which we can see here, this is for odd cases. And this orange is for even cases. So let me take an orange itself. So the red is for even. The orange is for odd. So that is what we found for five four. Now this was for in dimension two. Now what we do is now we add phi six interaction. So now we can see that the, the bump increases. The interaction to this part increases by this much. And again, in, in this, green, let me take green. 
So in this case, uh, this is the odd part. And hello, am I audible? Hello? Hello? Yes, you are audible. Oh, sorry, I thought I'm disconnected. Okay. And uh, this, uh, this part comes from the odd part. So the same, but in, as we go from five, four to five, six, there's like a, not much bump, but when we go to five, eight, there's a sudden bump, like a huge bump. Huge bump. And if you just, uh, for the sake of showing all of them, all of them together, this is for free field. No, let me take a blue one. This is for the free field. Why this contribution of the bombs are dominant at the small values of n? Uh, that, that was also uh, the question that we were asking. The, for what we like uh, came out, maybe the all the interaction when n uh, goes large, the, all of them cancel out. But, like, that was what we came up with. We are also not very sure, like why is why is this happening? So this is what we observe. But like, why is it happening? Uh, one one way we were arguing is that if you take a uh, uh, large n of them, maybe all the interactions somehow cancel one one another. Uh, but uh, we 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 may we could be wrong in that. But yeah, that has to be seen. Like why why is it actually happening? Uh, Abhishek, I think uh, uh, for small n, the like uh, the one by n factor is not like dominant. Yeah, that, that is there. Why is that? There is a one by n factor out there, you know. But the, the, the question is that, you know. Yeah. So in the wave function, we have uh, these uh, one by n factors. So uh, for large n, uh, the like uh, the contribution and the wave function values will be very small. Yeah, like but as we uh, go in large element, yeah, yeah. so the country yeah, 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 yeah. according to Miller's, this uh, uh, difference can be clearly visible for small values of n. Yes, sir. Mm. this contribution goes as one by n. Mm. So, like, so if we so Nilesh is putting that uh, there is uh, like a uh, one by n factor here, one by n, there's a one by uh, sorry, one by n square out here, and there's I think one by n cube, no, out here, one by n cube. So, yeah, okay. so the, the Nilesh is saying that there's one by... For n. small values of n, it is expected that the dominance will be comes out from all these lambda 8, lambda 6 terms. If it is large, all these will wash out. Yes. Sir. But like, what, what does it physically mean? Like, that uh, needs to be like, uh, understood. So this was when we are adding interactions. So now uh, increasing dimension. So this, this is for five four. Five four. So the same pattern is we, which we got later for dimension. Previous one was for dimension two. That was like a one plus one. This is two plus one. So in this case, uh, this is the again for the odd, and this is for the even. Again, my question is for smaller dimensions. I can see things are working out very well for large gen. For higher dimension, why large n values are a little bit distinguishable? Uh, we need to actually uh, go beyond 30 to actually see that. So actually, if you go, which we actually did, but to compare side by side, we kept 30 and 30 here. So if we kept keep here, it goes like, it does go like. So like, the, the, it could be thought as this bump uh, a bit has been risen up. You are saying that if you go for more values of n, and you must have some convergence. Yes, sir. Actually, we did uh, we, we did see the convergence, but just to compare side by side, we kept it to thirty. That I there is actually I can understand. actually there's a bump in between them. Okay. So this is for five four. Similarly, 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 we saw for five six the same pattern, which is again this odd, then again this is for even, and there's a bump, and later it converges. So since here we have gone up to forty. See, we can see that again it's converging out here. And similarly for phi 8. So, but yeah, we, uh, in the phi 8, the, the bump is drastic. Okay. Now with uh, omega 0, which omega 0 depends, uh, refers to the mass of the theory m. So, if we increase omega 
So uh, we expect you know the complexity to increase. And if I zoom in, uh, I'll, instead of going to the, I'll this show you. It's quite expected. I, I can understand this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The so other this one is a little bit. Yes, sir. So the, this one is for pre-filled. We add phi four. Then we add phi six, and we get phi eight. And uh, all of the contributions actually will become one liter. Again, because of that one by n factor. And uh, just to uh, sh show the, the difference between even and odd, we have plotted with respect to the, we have plotted the fractional change. So first uh, the change the change between them, uh, the even and odd is large as n goes to higher, higher, higher they all become one. And uh, we expect up, uh, above, uh, for large, it converges so that there is no change between even and odd. Okay. Uh, similarly, we saw this for a higher dimension. Uh, and this is for when we have five, six. And, uh, but we do see that like, you know, uh, the pattern is like not, uh, uh, this is not repeating. And for phi eight, uh, these are uh, the pattern. Um, this is a bit like what if that point corresponds to, which is out of that, like for oh yeah, this this box there yeah, because there was a huge jump. So certainly there's a there was a huge jump. Okay, so when you calculate that, there's one point going very high. It's some kind of numerical error or numerical fluctuation or something like that. Uh, no, no, sir, because like uh, in phi eight, as we saw, like uh, in this, the bump is not. Uh, very drastic in this the bump is very drastic so from here suddenly it goes to here okay. uh, so that that, that uh, fractional change has been uh, depicted here but then uh, we see that uh, now the pattern the difference is smaller and smaller so there's one point which is very high up and this becomes smaller 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 okay so like th this is what we observed uh, in our calculation. And uh, I would end uh, the talk by giving a uh, future direction. So one we could like, uh, uh, as we discussed uh, in the middle of the uh, talk, like we could uh, uh, continue continue our work for odd Wilsonian operators and try to, you know, uh, see how the complexity varies in that case, because uh, no one in the literature has done for odd uh, operators. Uh, uh, next would like, again, the, we just pointed out in the talk, for non Gaussian states, like work has been done for like a lot of states, okay, a lot of th thermophile states, mixed states, coherent states. But in all of these cases, they are taking Ga Gaussian states. But if you take a non Gaussian state, like how do we, like what is the formalism to, you know, calculate complexity in this case? Since Gaussian is very easy to handle and all that, but in, gen in general, there'll be all kinds of states. So for that circuit complexity, uh, we need to, uh, that should, should, should be done also. Uh, for strongly, we, these are all weakly coupled, but in the original uh, proposals, uh, the CFT is strongly coupled. So if you want to uh, understand the holographic proposals uh, very nicely, we need to develop uh, uh, the formalism to understand uh, complexity in strongly interacting fields. Also, the work which we did was for bosonic fields. So we could also have uh, complexity for weakly interacting fermionic field theories. So like uh, for Free field theories, uh, this is the two papers, uh, good papers have uh, done for free fermionic field theories, but uh, if they are weakly interacting, then what uh, is the scenario for complexity? So this could be the future directions. And I would like to end my talk. Thank you. Uh, if anyone has any questions, they can ask me. So now guys, jump on Obisha can ask questions. I can see Shorab also there if he wants to ask any question. Shoptor, she's not asking any questions. Shoptor, she asked. I can see some other participants also, if they want to ask any question. Please, any clarification, any comment? Yeah, like these uh, future directions are very important. Particularly, this is uh, the strongly interactive system for CFTs. It's, it's like very important, right? Mm. Like this formalism, uh, 
uh, I think uh, one needs to modify completely because this will not work, whatever we need. Mm. And this uh, fermionic theory, I think people have done for massive fermion or something like that. But if it is a fermionic effective field theory, it means if you have mm. more terms, then what you will do? That also people have done about that as well. Any question or comment? Shomo? Yes, yes, any comment yes. or non-question states? Like, uh, you want to comment? Nilesh wants Nilesh. to ask some question. Nilesh, please. So, uh, like, I want to comment on, like, uh, why we have, like, chosen the IDS three parameterization. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, like, each blocks, like, uh, the two by two blocks uh, sh should have, like, uh, like they belongs to a group which is like a GL. Let me, uh, let me go to that page. Okay? GL2, to that page. So, to Nilesh, can you wait for a while? I'll go to the page. You can explain okay. them. Okay. Hmm. Hello? Yes. So if we consider the U1 matrix, so here we can like, we know that like uh, the U1 belongs to like GL2, R group. So, uh, like, and it can be ex uh, like uh, decomposed into R times SL comma two R. So, yeah. and SL two comma R, uh, like uh, the determinant should be uh, there, sh there should be one. And, okay. uh, and in ADS, one, right? uh, yes, and in ADS parameters, like uh, uh, this, like uh, this can be perfectly like parameterized. Uh, so, this determinant condition can be satisfied using this ADS three parameter like uh, very easily. No, no, SL two R goes to ADS three. You are saying that. Uh, uh, so actually, the GL uh, GL two R goes to this uh, ADS three parameter. Uh, like uh, like if we consider a determinant, so X not X not square minus X one square, um, uh, like. Uh, should be equal to uh, one. So, oh, but, but, here, but, but here we can see that we, we also have exponentials. So the determinant should be equal to uh, exponential. Uh, and uh, this this thing can be satisfied using this uh, uh, this ADS three parameter. And so, uh, that answer I know. My point was this is not only the parameterization. Yes, sir. My point was why suddenly you are connected, connecting with the antidecitor space, particularly, not any other parameterization, particularly a DS3. Why? One, like, one thing, uh, like, are, you, are you trying to connect with holography? That's why you did that? Yes, sir. I think this, like, we are studying the fields in bulk. And, uh, and so basically, like, basically you are trying to say after this parameterization, whatever you calculate, it is similar calculation. If you do the ADS3 circuit complexity calculation in ADS3, if you do the circuit complexity cal calculation, the holographic circuit complexity. So are you pointing that both of them will give the same result? Uh, yes, sir. I think we have like, uh, we are like uh, doing this for, for this reason. Yeah, otherwise I don't see any other uh, point why suddenly this is used. Yes, yes. Yes, sir, but this uh, part about photography was not mentioned in this uh, uh, Rob Myers paper. So they meant, they just said that uh, this, the parameters at ADS3. Holography was not mentioned, they have missed somehow, but ADS3 you did means oh, yeah, I think the calculation in the holographic yeah. space time. Yes, like I feel like uh, they just uh, use ADS3 because uh, uh, they have some results already done in holography in ADS3. So they can so that's use. That's my point. You are trying to connect with holographic circuit complexity. That's why they did that. They are trying to check whatever they did before, whether that is consistent with this kind of parameterization or not. Yeah, 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 yeah yes, yes. Yes, otherwise, but, uh, there is no point. Otherwise, yes, yes, if, you, if you say infinite number of points to me, I will not convince. Okay. Anyways, any other points? Uh, just one question, Abhishek. Like, uh, you approximated the part of uh, part of the wave ground state wave function into exponential form. Right? 
एक्सपोनेंशियल ऑफ एक्स वेन एक्स इज स्मॉल ओके when x is small can be done as 1 plus x right uh, so now we have size size zero the on part of okay plus lambda or plus the part the wave function okay plus let, let, uh, let's call it lambda 4 okay lambda 6 and lambda 8 this one now what you do is take common okay so phi 0 take common phi 0 and we will have this okay lambda 4 some something lambda 6 something and lambda 8 something and now we have chosen lambdas okay all this to be small okay so now this we can you know approximate as some constant like uh, some constant into exponential of this which we have done here exponential of this the one which we pulled out okay one which we pulled out so that the, we got one plus something and that we have written as exponential Yes, I understood. Thank you. Any other points or comments? Yashodhara, you want to ask a question? Uh, I think she. Yeah, she. My mother. My mother joined. I think. You want to ask any question, Yashodhara? No sir, no sir. Oh, okay. Uh, Shaura, do you have any comments or question? So I have one comment. Ah, uh, please, please. So, so the complexity for free field and interacting is same at the end, or because if you go to the large and limit, then the complexity is similar. Hmm. Similar but not same. Similar so yeah, the connections also. are I think uh, very small because uh, the coupling parameters we have taken uh, like. Otherwise, are... otherwise your uh, perturbation is is not valid actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the reason. Yeah, but like uh, our goal was to show that like there are different contributions. That is what. For small n, different contributions yeah. can be found easily. For large n, even though it seems like similar, if you zoom the plots, you will see that they are not exactly same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically, lambda four, lambda six, lambda eight is basically correction mm. phi square. Okay, see if you are talking about corrections, correction cannot be larger. It's a large. Mm. It is not large correction. It's basically perturbative correction. Mm. That's why it's a uh, suppose it's uh, up to phi square. Your complex value wise, I'm talking about is like one point zero zero one. After correction, if you say that it is one point zero three one, okay, so that is feasible. Basically, if you go for more and more higher terms, you will basically correcting the complexity. Obishek is smiling. I don't know. No, no. I, I'm like thinking. Well, yeah, like uh, what a bit of like uh, till yeah, how you know? Till how long you can know? Uh, how long is it's, it's up to feasibility. Like mm -hmm. here, you can't go after after some point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after some point, your precision calculation will be not valid. Will not valid. You can't do anything actually. Also, this like comment, like I wanted to make, like okay, like last time I was discussing with Swami, can we treat this like a five, four, five, six, five? Like if suppose there's an environment, okay, and the system is interacting with the environment, suppose like a Gaussian state is interacting with the environment, can we model the environment using five square, five, six, and five, eight, like as an interact background uh, interact environment? Uh, like suppose like thermal bath something. Oh, Baba. So you you were talking about some kind of open quantum system or something? Yeah, like, yeah. But like, and you see, like, suppose there's a system. Uh, and... Forget about that. That formalism, even in the literature, is not also not there. No, there not. No, but like, if you, the, the thing was like, uh, what is the circuit? Com simple question. What is the circuit complexity in an open quantum system? Uh, still, yeah, not not yet developed. 
because it is basically dependent on the model of the environment. Mm -hmm. Here it is not dependent on any model of anything. Mm -hmm. It's a closed mm -hmm. quantum system. Whatever you have interaction, it is basically in between themselves. It's a self interaction. Self oh yeah, yes, yes, self interaction. Mm -hmm. Now we are trying to generalize for two field interacting with gravity that Nilesh knows, Kiran also knows. Nilesh? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. So like that squeezed. So if mm, there is a yes, squeeze yes, state yes. formalism, then doing the calculation is very simple. Here, we didn't do any squeeze state formalism. So like mm. if we apply the squeeze state formalism here, maybe the, your calculation will be like one fourth, whatever you did. Mm. But squeeze state formalism is basically a special one. It's mm. not a general one. Always the squeeze state in quantum mechanics will not exist. Mm. Nilesh, I'm right? Yes, sir. Uh, in squeeze state formalism, uh, like we can also study the cosmological models. Also. Well, a cosmological one too is, but like suppose you are talking about uh, quantum optics, they are also you deal with squeeze states. Yes, sir. So the, the, the idea of squeezing is basically mm. parameterizing the interaction part in terms of squeezed operators. Mm. Yes, sir. But that is not always true, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes, Otherwise, in nature, all the states are squeeze states. Yes, sir. Okay, anyways, like Obishek had given a very nice talk. So, all of you, please okay. unmute and give a big clap for Obishek for giving such a nice talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, thank you for agreeing to give this talk and uh, this talk will be uh, posted in YouTube, link will be shared, all of you knows that where it is posted, you can look into his talk. Um, our group meeting regarding whatever we are doing, I think it would be on Monday. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Monday, 11 o'clock, morning. Okay. okay. All yeah, of okay. you will appear, all of you. Okay, sir. Acha, is this guy, uh, Shomo? Yes, sir. Talk to your friend and ask him to join that meeting on that day. Uh, Monday. Monday. Okay. Shomo is that these days, Shomo is recommending people. No, actually, 